You guys want to know a secret? Yeah. For four years, my wife and I couldn't get pregnant. And it was my fault. <laughs> For years, the secret was killing me, man. I was at The Daily Show. Every day, Trevor Noah would come up to me with those cute-ass dimples. <laughs> hey, friend, what's going on? What's going on with you and Bina? You're like Indian Barbie and Ken. And I'm like, I know. And much like Ken. My parts don't work. Do you know what it's like to be a guy and find out your balls are broken? It's humiliating. Dude, I felt lied to my entire life. Growing up, they told me. My sperm is radioactive. <laughs> remember sex ed? Yeah. Do you remember the way they would horrify us young boys? <laughs> One morning you're sitting there, Mrs. Lettington just bursts in. <laughs> Watch out, boys. <laughs> Your pre-cum will get girls pregnant. <laughs> Don't look at anyone. Your pre-cum will get girls pregnant. Pregnant, hussin the come before you come. Can conceive a life. You're like, Mrs. Lettington, I'm nine. <laughs> this is terrifying. Good. Now let's watch a live birth. You're like, no. Why did my parents sign the waiver? <laughs> and anyone going through fertility problems, you know it loads the relationship with all this pressure, you know? Me and Bina, we'd be up late at night having these really tough conversations. You know, is this gonna happen for us? Are we gonna be able to have kids? And then I was like, babe, what if we adopt? What if we adopt a white baby just to flex on these motherfuckers? <laughs> just to show people we made it, you know what I mean? Reverse Angelina Jolie, power move. We'll show him off at parties, just this chubby white kid with asthma. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's just like, hi. I'm Bradley Minhaj. I'm a proud member of the Indian American community. This is my son, Bradley. We saved him from a war-torn part of America. Detroit, everyone's like, wow. <laughs> Bina's like, I don't want a white baby. I'm like, whatever, you're racist. <laughs> All Bradleys matter. <laughs> She's like, Hassan, I don't want a white baby. Don't you understand? I want a baby with you. I know. <laughs> That's Bina, that's why I married her. Family is everything to her. She's a Patel. <laughs> she has 961 cousins at this show tonight. And she's a Motel Patel, so that family shit runs deep. Yeah! You ever notice that every motel you've ever stayed at, all owned by Indian people? Look at the name tag, Patel. They're all from one part of India, and they're all related. If you've stayed at a Hampton Inn, a La Quinta Inn, a Quality Inn, a Comfort Inn, a Super 8, you have been supporting this Patel cartel. <laughs> For centuries, we have been debating, Indians, Asians, Jews, who is the cheapest of them all? Motherfucker, it's Indians! <laughs> Only Gujarati Indians would choose a family business you could live at. <laughs> that was Bina's kingdom, man. The kingdom of La Quinta Inn. And now she wanted to start a kingdom with me. Dude, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I was kinda glad we were having fertility problems. <laughs> I didn't wanna have kids. I was like, come on, babe, I just got verified on Instagram. <laughs> Let me enjoy this clout. She's like, I don't give a shit about clout. The only reason why we can't get pregnant is because it took you 10 years to propose to me. <laughs> yeah! I went to the doctor. It's not my ovaries, motherfucker. It's your balls. <laughs> Go get your balls checked out. I'm like, hey, hey, don't bring them into this. 
Because here's the thing, I'm at that age where I don't like going to the doctor. Because a lot of doctors are my age. <laughs> and they're Indian, which means I might know them. So we're sitting there in the waiting room at NYU, right? Door opens, nurse comes out. She's like, Dr. Gupta will see you now. I'm like, oh, 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 this better not be Arjun Gupta from Sacramento. <laughs> then I hear a familiar voice. He's like, oh, son, man, hush. I'm like, this is Arjun Gupta from Sacramento. <laughs> I know this kid. He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> he failed out of the Caribbean med school. Twice I go, Arjun, how are you licensed? He's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> That's why I'm a jizz doctor with a basement office. <laughs> I'm like, don't talk about my mom, Arjun. <laughs> Bina, he's not even an MD. He's a goddamn D.O. <laughs> oh, boo. Boo it up, D.O.s. In the back, doctors of osteopathic medicine hate that joke. <laughs> so MDs and D.O.s, they're basically the same. They're both good doctors. The only thing is, a D.O. sense of humor stops at their MCAT score. <laughs> you see those seats way back there? Those are the D.O. seats. These are the MD seats. Do you know what the difference is? It's five points on your MCAT, okay? <laughs> so this dude is all up at my merchandise. He's like, oh, bro, I know what's wrong. I'm like, stop saying bro. He's like, son, oh. <laughs> You got too much blood down there. It's lowering your sperm count. So we're gonna do a dangerous surgery called varicocele repair. But don't worry, I'll be doing the surgery. <laughs> I go, Arjun, I'm very worried. <laughs> You're in a lab coat in Jordans. <laughs> Still pulls out a trimmer. He goes, let me shave you down right now. <laughs> Let's do this right here, right now. I go, Arjun, back up. I'm not ready. He goes, listen, man. If you don't get this surgery, you can't have kids, ever. I go, are you serious? Me and Bina, we can't have kids. Like you're telling me we can't start a family? See, that's the crazy thing they never tell you about adulthood. Life gets very real when don't want becomes can't have. Isn't that right, Dios? <laughs> so I'm sitting there naked, and Bina is looking at me. And I turn, and Arjun is looking at me. And he pulls out the manscaper. And I go, fuck it, give me the fade. Make the bottom match the top. He puts the Darth Vader on me, right? I wake up six hours later, naked. I look down, I'm in a huge diaper <laughs> with four huge blood stains on the diaper. And I look up and I just see Arjun. <laughs> and I go, Arjun, I only have two testicles. <laughs> How did you mess up two extra times? <laughs> He's like, don't worry about it, bro. We figured it out. <laughs> Just give it six weeks. In Dio's, he was right. He was right. Six weeks later, me and Bina, we have hot, monogamous action. Bina gets pregnant finally, four years in the making. <laughs> oh, no. No, I'm in the delivery room. She pushes the baby out. I didn't know this. Now they just throw the baby on the dad. They're like, do you love it forever? I'm like, it's wet. They're like, kiss it. I'm like, it's not done yet. Let the yeast rise. It's not even brown. Did you know that? Brown babies don't come out brown. They're Caucasian. I'm like, it looks like Bradley, return. They're like, no returns. It's not Costco. They put the baby on the boob. Then they put the baby on me. And I'm holding the baby. And Bina's holding me. <laughs> and she goes, can you believe it? We're finally a family. 
promise me, Hasan. Promise me. You will always protect this family. And I was like, of course. I need you. For material. <laughs> Stand-up doesn't write itself. Three days later, the bread had leavened. It finally browned. And I'm holding this little gulab jamun, this little brown ball. Yo, and here's how I knew my daughter was Indian. She wouldn't stop staring at me. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're one of us. You're not respecting personal boundaries. <laughs> Welcome to the tribe. We lock eyes, and it just hits me right here. Parents, you know this feeling. I was like, oh my God, I've never felt this before in my life. But I love you so much. I've only known you three days, but I would do anything for you. Like, I can't believe how much I love you. And I know I've said that to Bina before, but <laughs> I was lying. <laughs> I was lying! And she was lying to me. Here's how I know we both unconditionally love my daughter. She's four now, okay? Now, as you know, we could not adopt a white baby. My wife is a racist. But, <laughs> but we now live in a white state. We live in Greenwich, Connecticut. <laughs> Get out white. <laughs> Everybody there works at a hedge fund, and I can feel your judgment, Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, you're judging me. You're like, really? You're gonna take your daughter and raise her in Greenwich? You're gonna spoil her like that? Nah. I want her to see how gritty and grimy and corrupt the real world is. <laughs> Every morning she wakes up and she sees bankers and traders in Patagonia puffer coats. <laughs> and I go, look, babe. Criminals. <laughs> They're the reason Bobby doesn't have a pension. Look at them. So I'm taking her to school, right? And we pull up in the Honda Odyssey. I'm not trying to brag, but your boy's really doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I used to own a black Toyota Camry, but I had to get rid of it because people just get into my car at intersections. <laughs> we pull up to school. All the hedge fund dads are like, hey, welcome to photo day, dad. I'm like, they still do photo day. I have a thousand photos of my daughter in my pocket from yesterday. <laughs> We're still doing one photo like it's the goddamn 1800s. <laughs> Just today, we shall take one photo <laughs> of your daughter. Come sit upon the wooden stool. Turn, look back at it. <laughs> Here is a photo of your first bone blinking. No retakes. I'm like, that seems fair. <laughs> $89.99, thank you, Life Touch. <laughs> what a deal. <laughs> I'll put this in my wallet that I don't own anymore. <laughs> I put her on the stool, right? She drops her mask. She has snot <laughs> all over her face. Just <laughs> All the hedge fund dads are like, what <laughs> is this? Then I hear one of the dads, I will never forget this motherfucker's name. His name is Connor. <laughs> Ooh. And Connor audibly goes, yuck. <laughs> and all of a sudden it hits me here. I'm like, oh, this hedge fund criminal <laughs> thinks my daughter is a Gundy little brown girl. Nah, not on my watch. So I'm drinking a nice coffee, right? And I pull the green straw out of my iced coffee. And I walk over. And I tilt her head back, and I... <laughs> suck the boogers out of her nose. And I swallow that shit like a real one. <laughs> I would never do that for my wife. <laughs> Look, man, I got a thousand photos of my daughter in my pocket from yesterday. But this photo is my favorite. Because for four years, I never thought that I would be ready to be a dad. But on that day, <laughs> I could taste it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.